thing is, it's not just Weakfield, right? If you look at Basecamp, take a look at what 3070 Signals does. This is an amazingly well-designed form, okay? Right here, remember cognitive dissonance. They're asking for my credit card money. I thought everything wants to be free, right? What they're saying is, they're reminding you that there's over three million users, they're secure and reliable, they have great customer service, there's a 30-day free trial right here where the credit card is. And right underneath it, they're going to tell you how safe you are. It's beautifully designed for it. Beautifully designed for it. And we've written about this. And the reason we have the right to, to talk about it is because we had a bet. Shopping cart abandonment rates have hovered between 60 and 70% since the start of online retail. And when Mahesh Jain from Cafe Press called me up and said, well, we read everything you did, and we've got our shopping cart abandonment rate down to 35%. I don't believe you could do any better. I said, really? And we started talking about budget. Now, Mahesh is unbelievably hard to negotiate. Okay? And, you know, here I am, a Jewish guy and an Indian guy. <laughs> okay, and we're about to negotiate, and it was getting pretty tight. And I just said, okay, listen, Mahish, I'm going to make this really simple for you. I know that I can solve this problem. Not only do I know I can solve this problem, I know I can solve it for hours I can redesign this. Okay? You've done a couple of things wrong, and the bottom line is it's not going to take me days. So I'm willing to bet you there's no real cost of materials for what you're buying is what's in my head. But here's the deal. I don't want money, but I do want dinner wherever. <laughs> okay. Believe me, it cost you more money than you thought it was going to cost. <laughs> okay. you know, if you ever want to take me for a seven pound lobster, okay, I will fly to New York, we'll go and get a nice seven pound lobster. Um, you have to have wine with lobster, right? So, um, but anyway, the price that I put on it was not just a dinner. I said, Mahesh, you're going to be my PR whore. I'm going to be able to use your example and talk about it and, and parade it through everywhere. And so we created white papers about it. We put it in call to action. And people refer to this often enough. We've done much better ones since, but the principles are all the same. We wrote down to a 15% abandonment rate. Okay? And all we really did was make sure that we put all the point of action assurances. We made sure, but the point of action assurances, again, the place where you're going to take action. That's where the secure shopping was. We condensed the form. We made it look much easier than it was, and it did extremely well. Here's another pet peeve, and it still happens today. We're in 2010, and it makes me want to pull my hair out. If, why do I have to create an account in order to buy something from it? Who here will admit to having a side like that? You do. <laughs> my side. Ah. I want because I wanted to know what they're thinking. So <laughs> no, really. I mean, if I fill out all this information, I give you my credit card, and I'm going to give you my email and everything else. Once you have all that information, can you ask me if I want to create an account after I check out? Really? Like, what does it take? Make my email address the username <laughs> and ask me to put in a password. Why do you want me to set up an account? Before you have my money, why are you in your own way? Okay, and I know that there are people here that have fake flag, but they're just scared. <laughs> okay, again, point of action assurances, very important. This is a business to business one. It's very important because Brad Direct was a client of ours, and they and they really had this problem. They could get the phone to ring, but then it ran with the wrong persons, right? Wrong target clients. So what we did is we said, hey guys, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make it really easy to call, but we're also gonna set a couple of expectations. The first thing is, is that if you call, okay, we're gonna say that if you're calling to speak with a sales engineer, which is the only way a sale could be made, then we're gonna respond always within the business, you know, within business hours, within two hours. Otherwise, we'll increase 24 hours. But we didn't just do that. We said, hey, here's your reassurance, and by the way, here's your guy, it's Steve. That's Steve, you're gonna to talk to Steve, get on the phone with Steve. Okay, conversion went through the roof because they got it, right? Because 
that's what they wanted. They wanted to talk to a systems engineer, right? There were other con there, there were other forms that they could fill out if they had any other question. But here, they knew that they would have to speak with an engineer. Lens End, and seriously, Lens End has been doing the best job for almost the 10 years that, that, that we've been following them um, at designing really good point of action assurances. Think about it, when you buy clothes, the biggest problem you have is, is it gonna fit? Am I gonna fit it? Right? And they remind you all along that you can return it. It's a, it's a marvelous job, they've always done a good job, and they always keep up with technology. So, use them as an indicator. Another little thing, and it sounds absurd because we're all like involved in this internet thing. That, that little lock, this connection to the server is guaranteed safe. People still expect that. They, they don't know that if it's you know HTTPS, they don't get that. They don't understand secure. Little locks, little do that. It matters to them. Okay, the other thing is they keep you in the process. Um, when you do a requirements document, right, for a software engineer, and they start talking to you about what you want, they're, they're really, you know how they build those flow charts, right? And they say, we're gonna do this first, we're gonna do this second, we're gonna do this third. And at the start of the internet, right, when people built the shopping cart, the first thing that somebody did is they sat down and said, okay, how do we buy, right? We said, okay, we pull this off, we pull this off the shelf, we look at it, we get some details, we say, this is good, I'm gonna put this in my shopping cart, and then we're gonna do something. Now, the thing is that in a linear form, that's what we do, right? When we go to the supermarket, we put it in the shopping cart. How long do you stare at it? You don't. Well, that's the problem, right? How many times do you add something to your cart, even today? and it takes you into the cart, right? Because it's a linear process, because some engineer <laughs> thought about it as a linear process. This is not something we spend any time on. So the best people do something to indicate that you've added it, and they let you continue shopping. You're there to shop, not to look at the shopping cart. Another thing they do is that they understand that technology doesn't always work, right? When we publish stuff, I mean, this may come as a surprise or something. But it doesn't look the same on my Mac as it does on your PC, thank God. <laughs> okay? And it doesn't look the same on my iPad, right? On my iPad, if you have stuff in Flash, it's invisible, and I don't care. I'm not pulling out my Mac to go to your site. I'm just leaving, right? And the thing is, is even in things like email, take a look at the difference of doing a little bit of planning in advance. This is what Smart Bargain sends, right? And that's what it looks like in the preview. This is what ProFlower sends, even without the images, right? And Google email them, give you the images, unless you ask for them, right? You can tell what the site does and what you're expected to see, right? It's 2010, HTML doesn't all resolve the same. Right, let's get with it. Let's start thinking about this. Also, they budget for experience. They don't just build the site and say, now we built the site. And then they start thinking, well, maybe we should do something to improve it. You know what, when you build the site, you're about 30% done. When you've done a redesign, you're about 30% done. And the real work is in the optimization, not in the site. And everybody does that as backwards. Except for some people who now control 25% of e-commerce market, right? Who actually said, whoa, whoa, advertising, design, we're not ever gonna stop redesigning. We're not ever gonna stop thinking about the experience, right? And so what did Bezos do? He took all his money, of course he was worried because he wasn't sure he was gonna get more funding at that point. He says, we take those funds that might otherwise be used to shout about our service and put those funds instead into improving the service. That's the philosophy we've taken from the beginning. If you do build a great experience, customers will tell each other about that. Word of mouth is very powerful. That experience is everything from the interface, right, all the way to the customer service, to the shipping, it's, an, it's all one thing.